today. Uh, my name is Wayne Hesch. I'm the product manager for Visual Mod Flow Flex here at Schlumberger. Thank you for taking the time to join our webinar today on Visual Mod Flow Flex and PEST. Uh, we'll do a brief overview of many of the key concepts of PEST, not really go into too many things in great detail. The session we did this morning uh, wrapped up in about 45 or 50 minutes with some time for questions and comments at the end, so I expect you should be able to uh, accomplish the same in uh, this session. A few quick remarks before we get started. For those that are new to WebEx, there's a small toolbar that appears at the top of your window, uh, which you can uh, just mouse over and the window should pop down. You should see um, option to use chat. I have all the microphones muted just to prevent audio feedback. Um, so if you wish to send me questions or comments, uh, please use this chat feature that's there. If possible, please leave these till the end and I can certainly go back and uh, show a specific slide or feature if you wish. If I'm unable to get to your questions through the webinar today, please feel free to email me. My address is shown on the screen there. And we'll do a recording of this uh, session and also make that available, available for downloading and playing back uh, within the next few days. You'll see a link posted on our blog. All right, well, let's get started. The outline for the webinar today is to have a brief introduction on the, some of the concepts of PEST and model calibration. Discuss um, the background of PEST, when to use it, uh, why you should use it, how it works. And then uh, do a brief walkthrough of how we've integrated PEST into the Visual Model Flow Flex GUI. We'll look at uh, how it works within the interface and the key features that we've added, which I think will provide you uh, benefits when you're using the software and really distinguish our, uh, the way we've imp implemented PEST over the other uh, products that are out in the market. And lastly, we'll wrap up with some future plans on things we want to improve on PEST in the coming months, and also future plan development plans for Visual Mob Flow Flex for 2013. So uh, as I mentioned, the first couple slides, we'll just do um, uh, a summary of some uh, concepts. For those of you um, that are uh, more intermediate to advanced models, they should be something that are very uh, commonly well known to you, but since we get a wide range of expertise that join this webinar, I really don't uh, know what um, level of experience different modelers have. So uh, we'll first go over some qu quick slides about model calibration and whatnot. Um, first, uh, something to always keep in mind is that all modeling is uncertain. Um, there's uncertainty in the data, the conceptualization, and the results. And sometimes we take this for granted and think the models and the inputs that we're putting in are true to stone and likewise with the results. But this should always be taken with the a grain of salt. So we need some method of assessing this uncertainty um, so that we can develop the best model calibration and build reliable and defensible models. It's good to assess the model calibration manually, but it's also good to have a set of automated tools um, for all parts of the calibration process. And this is really what PEST does. It's an automated parameter estimating tool, estimation tool which can provide you with the uh, estimates for the sensitivities, the uncertainty analysis of the model, and much more. And we'll go through some of these key things in the coming slides. So generally in uh, hydrogeology, it's uh, often believed that it's much easier to uh, measure the model results or the outputs, um, typically these are the heads, than it is to measure the input parameters, things like conductivity, porosity, storativity, et cetera. So as a result, we try to infer the system inputs or parameters from a set of uh, results or outputs. And this is what's called an inverse problem. Quick slide, a few slides about model calibration. Hopefully this is something that's familiar to all of you, but essentially uh, model calibration involves uh, finding an appropriate set of parameters and boundary conditions that will allow you to match your historical field measured values to what uh, the model calculated within a reasonable range of error. Uh, this is something that should be done manually through trial and error, but uh, after over several, several, several iterations, you'll find quickly that it's much easier to do this with the help of PEST. So model calibration can be both qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative model calibration essentially taking a look at uh, the general correspondence between the model results and the physical hydrogeological system, so things like contour maps of heads and concentrations, uh, groundwater flow directions and plumes, perhaps comparing these uh, calculated uh, results with what you have generated 
through uh, contouring programs like Surfer or ArcGIS, et cetera, and also assessing the, the temporal variations of the system. You also want to assess uh, the number of distinct hydrological conditions that were used for the model, and in general, just look at the, the reasonableness of the act for hydraulic properties and make sure that they look reasonable based on your knowledge of the site. <clears throat> So quantitative model calibration, this is, uh, involves looking at the residuals, which is the basis of the error statistics uh, for uh, quantitative model calibration. For those um, that aren't aware, the residual is defined as the difference between the observed uh, head or flux and the calculated uh, head or flux. Uh, a couple of examples shown on the screen show uh, this um, through an image representation on the right, and the image on the left shows a uh, number of observations with a calibration chart that you would typically see following a mod flow run. So PEST's goal is to um, minimize the errors in your model, so minimizing these residuals. This is done through the use of a term called the objective function, which has the symbol phi, and it's defined as uh, shown on the screen there. It's uh, the sum of the weighted factor times each residual squared. Um, where WI is a weighting factor, which can be applied to each residual. So PES, uh, PES goal is to find the minimum value for the subjective function. Obviously, a large uh, residuals will, resort, will result in a large value for the objective function. And PES is uh, intelligent enough to track its own progress by following whether the subjective function is increasing or decreasing through the course of the PES run. A few quick uh, remarks about PEST for those that aren't familiar with it. Uh, PEST stands for Parameter Estimation. It's an uh, inverse modeling code developed by John Doherty, a gentleman uh, in Australia that works for Watermark Numerical Computing. It uses a uh, powerful uh, set of mathematical algorithms and techniques to determine an appropriate set of parameters that match, uh, that would achieve a minimal set of errors between your observations and calculated results. <coughs> It provides a valuable insight into the conceptual model, including possible areas where you need to collect more data or um, areas where you need to change the property zonation, for example. The code itself is public domain and it's model independent. It's uh, very well documented and supported on the, you can find uh, many supporting materials, test utilities, et cetera, on the PEST homepage, as shown on the screen there. And visual mod flow, Version 2.8 back in 1999 was one of the first uh, module interfaces to provide a user-friendly uh, GUI for PEST, and that was called WinPEST. So why should you use PEST? It has uh, a robust algorithm which allows it to be used with uh, large and complex groundwater models. You can customize uh, the input to your specific problem set, so you can uh, introduce uh, weighting factors for your observations. Uh, upper and lower bounds for parameter zones, et cetera. So you essentially decide on the design of the inverse problem. And lastly, PEST is easy to access and use within our Visual Model Flex environment. And I'll show you how that's done in the next couple slides. So there are three important places in the modeling process where PEST can be really useful for you. The first is at the beginning, um, when you're just starting the calibration process. Uh, the model has first been developed, and you want to uh, determine a gross calibration to the uh, conceptualization. Second is at the end of the calibration process, when you need to do some fine tuning or tweaking, uh, which will allow you to generate a best case set of model parameters. And lastly, PEST can be very powerful and useful when you're doing uh, sensitivity analysis or uncertainty analysis if you want to determine uh, what impact, what impacts a range of parameter values will have on future predictions, such as flu migration, if you were to vary uh, parameter distribution by a set of factors and see what is the travel time uh, to receptor wells, for example. So the next few slides will discuss how to use PEST, um, and the next slide after this will should show us a simple uh, illustration of this. But first, you want to start by building an uncalibrated functioning model, uh, functioning being the key word there. Um, you want to be able to run mod flow so it can converge relatively quickly, uh, vary the different in input parameters, um, solver settings, et cetera, and still get a um, 
convergence within a reasonable amount of time and within a reasonable mass balance error. Uh, next, you want to give pests a list of observations. These are typically your head observations from your wells, but they also can include uh, flux observations or concentrations. You tell pests which parameters it should modify. Again, these are typically hydraulic conductivity zones, but you can also include recharge rates, storage zones, etc. And you define the pilot points to represent each of these parameter zones. Next, PEST will run. It gives you back the optimum values for the selected oh, parameters did. and observations. Next, PEST also gives you valuable information that helps you to interpret the calibration. And this is probably one of the most important aspects or benefits of using PEST. Here's a, a brief illustration then that shows how the PEST run works. You start by uh, running mod flow. It'll read the uh, Module results and calculate and compare the calculated heads to the observed heads. Test will then uh, determine how the model will respond to changes in certain parameter values through a sensitivity analysis. It'll determine the pilot point values for each uh, pilot point location. The pilot point values are interpolated to the mod flow grid uh, using Krieging, which I'll describe shortly. The mod flow files are then updated with the uh, uh, adjusted conductivity or parameter distribution, <clears throat> and mod flows run again using those new input parameters. So the cycle continues over and over again until uh, PEST determines that it's reached uh, the minimum objective function, at which point the PEST run is done. So what does PEST do, or what can PEST do for you? It uh, provides you with a set of parameter values that results in a minimum objective function based on the parameters that you've chosen and the objective function criteria that you define. So again, it's very flexible. You specify how small you want that objective function or that uh, residual layer to be and what range of the parameter values you want to, to fall within, and PEST will do the rest. So PEST provides uh, valuable information on the model calibration and can give you insight into the validity or the accuracy of the conceptual model. So it can provide you with a set of sensitivities, both the composite and individual sensitivities for pilot point parameters. It provides you with correlation between parameters and can also give you insights into the conceptual model. However, one thing to keep in mind is that PEST cannot calibrate your model um, and PEST does not guarantee the reasonableness of the results. So the results may have uh, no bearing on the physical reality with which you're dealing. So you could have uh, very large hydraulic or KX values that really don't make any sense. But um, unless you can find that solution or specify those appropriate bounds and test, really won't um, know better. So if this happens, it's a really a good indication that the conceptual model is incorrect. And again, this can be very valuable information. So PEST is similar to these other um, numerical engines that we have within visual mod flows, like ModFlow or uh, MT3D Math, et cetera. It runs a standalone executable. It has a set of input files that are required for it to run in uh, text format. And it generates a set of text and binary output files. <clears throat> so Visual ModFlow Flex helps to prepare the input files for PESTs and helps you interpret the output files uh, using the, similar to the illustration that's shown there. So we do the pre-processing to generate the files for PEST and the post-processing allowing you to make sense of the PEST results. There are several uh, PEST input files um, that are required for a run. I'll go through the main ones. There's also a number of files that are generated through the course of using different PEST utilities, which I won't uh, discuss in this webinar. Uh, the key files that PEST requires are the template file, which contains a list of the parameters that will be adjusted, and it gives instructions on how to write the input file for the model, but this being modflow. The instruction files contains a list of observations and how PEST should collect the modflow simula simulated equivalents from the model in order to compare those to the observations. The PEST control file is also called the master file, which contains a, a number of different data type, uh, data categories, it has the control data, which are those um, parameters such as the number of test iterations to run, 
uh, which minimum objective function PES should try and achieve amongst other parameters. It has the parameter data and the associated groups. It contains the observation data and their associated groups. It also contains uh, the prior information, which can be introduced through the course of regularization techniques. <clears throat> After the test run is complete, it'll generate uh, several output files. Most these are all uh, ASCII files, but there's also a number of binary files, including a uh, Jacobian matrix, which I won't discuss here. But the key output files, which you can quickly interpret, include the PEST run record, which is the REC file. It contains a change in the objective function over several PEST iterations. Uh, the parameter history, so again, the change in the parameter values over each PEST iteration. And a number of statistics for residuals, uh, groups, parameter correlation, et cetera. The RES file contains the residuals, so the calculated and observed values for your observations, including uh, the associated weighted values if you've applied weighting factors, and also the residuals themselves. Then there's a .scn file, which contains the sensitivities for the parameters, and the .sco file contains the sensitivities for the observations. <clears throat> So let's take a look now at the um, how we integrated PEST into the Visual Module Flex GUI. So PEST, as I mentioned in the last slide, requires several input files, but uh, similar to a module run, it also requires uh, steps that have to be uh, run in a specific order. So for example, if you're building a module model, you need to build a grid, populate the properties, assign some boundary conditions with using a, a, an interface, generate the module packages, and run the simulation. PEST is the same type of approach. You need to have a set of files that need to be generated. Certain utilities need to be run after other files are generated, which I'll go into shortly. Um, so you need to follow a specific uh, set of uh, steps in a certain order. So within Visual Modflow Flex, we provide um, the PEST steps in a workflow-driven interface, uh, similar to a, a wizard where you can go forward and back uh, using the uh, navigator buttons. It guides you through the sequential steps for the PEST workflow and provides you with reasonable defaults at each step. Uh, we're pretty confident that this uh, workflow GUI should shorten the learning curve for you so you can uh, spend less time trying to find certain options or features within the GUI and focus more on understanding the PEST results and putting in meaningful input parameters. A brief look uh, at what that, uh, the, how that appears within the software. So if you have um, run a numerical model, um, obviously before running PEST, you need to translate and run your numerical model. The PEST run can be accessed from the tree here, and a new workflow window will appear in the main program. The uh, PEST workflow is shown on the middle of the screen here in the tree. You can use these uh, buttons to go to the next step or to the previous step, and you can also randomly select on any of the appropriate steps um, to quickly jump to a specific uh, uh, step. As you can see, the steps for the workflow are laid out uh, very similar to what I've already discussed in the previous slides. You start by defining your observations, then provide your parameters, and then you provide your pilot point parameterization. So we'll come back to this. Let me uh, resume the presentation. So the first step in the PEST workflow is to, do, to define your observations. Uh, so essentially select which observations you want to be included in the calculation of the objective function. By default, all your head observations are included. Um, you can also assign here the weights for the different observations. The weights allow you to give priority um, to different observations over, over others. So for example, you may want to give more weight to measurements that you can trust or in those areas that are crucial to the answer that you're trying to obtain from the model. You can also use weighting factors to decrease the bias that is uh, introduced if you have denser data. And you also should use weighting factors to give equal weightings to observations of different types or units. So for example, flux observations or residuals will have a significantly higher residual than a head observation, but you want the, those residuals potentially to be treated equally by PEST, so you would assign a weighting factor that would 
make the flux residual be more comparable to the head residual. <clears throat> the larger the weight uh, factor obviously increases the, the higher influence of a specific uh, observation point. So next you need to define uh, your parameters that pest should adjust. You select your parameter zones from the existing numerical model, so your connectivity or historativity zones. Within this interface, you would specify your tying options. So if you want to tie uh, horizontal to vertical connectivity, is something that's commonly done. So, so that pest will maintain a, a ratio of those uh, parameter values throughout the, the course of the estimation run. And you also can specify transformation options. It's typically recommended to do log transformation for connectivity, so you can specify those options in this interface. For each uh, property zone, you can also specify upper and lower bounds. Again, this is where you'd introduce your uh, prior knowledge of the site. So if you know that a specific uh, aquifer or aquitard uh, lies within a reasonable range of values, you can introduce a range of values and introduce min and lower bounds at this point. Uh, note that each parameter that you include um, at this step must be represented by one or more pilot points later on, and we'll get to that shortly. Next step is to define um, pilot points. I'll give you a few brief slides that introduce this concept. Um, pilot points essentially are uh, points or locations within the model domain that have x, y coordinates where pests will estimate a new parameter value, in this case connectivity, for example. So these can be strategically placed um, with the default initial value or the field measurements. These can be also field measurements um, where you've done field samples or um, pumping or slug tests um, to determine reasonable uh, connectivity values. Pests will estimate the parameter value at each pilot point then interpolates those values to the monoflow grid cells using Krieging. The fixed pilot point values are not adjusted during the pest run, so they act similar to uh, control points if you were to do uh, interpolation. Quick illustration of these uh, different pilot points. So the fixed pilot points, um, again, could come from a shape file or a spreadsheet where you have a list of uh, your pumping or slug test locations that you've done for a specific property zone. And these are shown in red, so you have the corresponding uh, uh, estimate for hydraulic conductivity at those points. The remaining pilot points could be the soft pilot points that you've strategically placed either using um, the 2D interface to point and click and add points or that you've imported from the Excel file or a shape file. There's uh, several tips on uh, and assigning pilot points which are described in the documentation and also on the PEST homepage in terms of uh, what's the most appropriate spot um, in terms of distances between observation and uh, downgrading boundary conditions, et cetera. So I encourage you to take a look at those if you're looking at some tips or guidelines on uh, where and how many pilot points you should place. Each um, parameter zone that you've selected um, must be mapped to a specific point data object. As I mentioned, the points can be imported from different file formats, or you can use the 2D environment in VModFlex to just um, digitally assign, point and click, and add these points. Uh, as I mentioned, you can distinguish between these fixed and soft points within the interface. There's a flag that you turn on for specific points, and um, I'll show you that now in the following slides. So this uh, is a 2D view showing the property distribution uh, with the, the values colored by the zone. You see I have uh, different points that are assigned for each of the parameter zones, which I've just imported from Excel. Uh, they can also be imported from Shapefile. And you can also manually just point and click and add uh, your own pilot points within the interface. Within the PEST workflow, I have each of these uh, points objects uh, mapped to a specific parameter zone. And in the lower half of the screen here, you can specify if any of these points are fixed, and in which case you can specify the initial value uh, for PEST. <clears throat> so 
So next step uh, after you define the pilot points is to specify Krieging and Variogram settings. Uh, a few remarks about this before we uh, show the options. So Krieging, if, uh, as most of you probably are aware, is a spatial interpolation technique that's based on geostatistics. A uh, fundamental part of Krieging is the definition of a variogram. So the variogram, in a nutshell, characterizes the spatial continuity or the roughness of your data set. Uh, the degree of differences in the values between any two points in, within this data set is a function of the distance between those points. Variograms are something that um, we could easily spend a day in terms of uh, discussing and learning about the, all the concepts. So I, it's really just a, a brief description of what these are all about within this, uh, the context of this webinar. So within a pest run, it treats a parameter zone as a, it calls it a structure, and each structure can have a unique variogram and corresponding Krieging settings. Points uh, within uh, the specific structure are created by the parameter zone and not by the layer. This is ideal when you have uh, property zones that span over multiple model layers, uh, and it prevents uh, duplicate pilot points um, or points that have the same XY locations within a given zone, which is not acceptable by pests. <clears throat> so by defining different uh, variograms and creating settings for each parameter zone, it allows you to, uh, gives you the flexibility to account for uh, heterogeneity within your different uh, property zones and geological differences and structures, et cetera. One of the key benefits of using uh, Krieging is uh, described in this slide. So a set of uh, Krieging factors or multipliers for each of the multiple grid cells have to be defined prior to running pests. Uh, the important thing here is that these um, Krieging factors can be defined independent of the actual parameter cell value. So these factors can be defined prior to running pests and only need to be defined once. Uh, therefore, there's no need to recalculate new Krieging factors for each new module run, and this saves a significant amount of uh, time when running pests. So we've uh, now defined the parameter zones, the observations, and our pilot points. Just to recap what that looks like in the workflow, here would be the settings we have for the different uh, structure, creating settings, and variograms. We're now at the option to define our uh, regularization options. So a few um, brief remarks about regularization before we uh, show how that's uh, integrated within the software. So for PEST to be effective, you need to define a lot of pilot points. Um, the drawback of doing so is that um, as you add more pilot points, there's uh, several costs that come with that. It may result in non-unique solutions. It uh, can result in numerical instability. And uh, obviously, it results in longer run times. Because remember, Mopflow needs to be run for each pilot point because it treats a pilot point, PEST treats each pilot point as a parameter. This may also break uh, a golden rule of PEST, which is that you shouldn't, um, you should have more observations um, in the PEST run for than for which you have parameters. The solution that the uh, PEST has integrated is a technique called regularization. And there's two types of regularization that are, that are available in PEST, which we'll describe in the next couple slides, these being ticking off regularization and SVD assist. Really, when we talk about regularization, it's uh, essentially a scheme or a method um, in, that would allow for a unique solution to be obtained for an ill-posed problem. Ill -posed problem. Um, this can be done uh, in two different ways. The first is with ticking off regularization, and this is uh, done through adding prior information uh, that defines the relations between the parameters and their values. There's two methods of ticking off regularization. The first is preferred homogeneity, and in this case, prior information equations that relate the pilot points to one another are introduced into the PEST uh, problem. Points that are close to each other should be homogeneous and PEST will only introduce enough heterogeneity into the system as required. The second method of regularization for ticking off is referred to as preferred value. Uh, in this case, the prior information equations will relate the pilot points to their initial value. 
test will try to keep um, try to estimate a value that is as close as possible to the initial pilot point value during the course of each iteration. So in contrast to Tikhonov uh, regularization, SVD assist, or also called singular value decomposition, works by reducing the number of parameters or parameter combinations from the PEST problem. It works by, uh, the, uh, PEST essentially, it works by determining uh, which parameters should be estimated through a sensitivity analysis and ignores the remaining parameters that are inestimatable or aren't worthy of uh, including in the PEST problem. PEST will combine these parameters into a subset of parameters which are referred to as superparameters. The number of superparameters is something that you define for your problem set. Um, it typically should be much less than the total number of parameters. There's a utility that can be run to determine an appropriate number of superparameters. So some of the benefits of regularization uh, obviously is that uh, it'll improve the numerical stability um, by introducing prior information and or reducing the number of parameters. It'll reduce the pest runtime significantly. This allows you to then use uh, more pilot points for representing your different parameter zones. So you can have um, hundreds or thousands of pilot points. The number of super parameters that you define uh, can be much less. So typically, uh, I think as a general rule of thumb is that the number of super parameters is roughly 20 to 40 percent of the total number of pilot point parameters. However, again, it's up to you. You can specify much less if you wish. Pass will determine the appropriate combination of those parameters and run accordingly. By using more pilot points, it results in a better fit between the model outcomes and the field observations. And regularization as a whole is a more um, natural approach to calibration. The estimated parameters for any specific uh, parameter zones will be as uniform as possible. And as mentioned previously, PEST will only introduce uh, heterogeneity only where it's necessary or because it's necessary. And this is something that's generally accepted as a pretty reasonable approach within the industry. Lastly, the resulting PEST values that are determined will, will and should match more closely with your original model. So after defining the regularization settings, you can adjust the PEST control file. The prior information that you define in the previous steps for regularization will be added to the PEST control file. And in the header here, you can make adjustments to the various parameters, such as the uh, goal for the objective function, how many test iterations you want to run. Uh, we provide uh, reasonable defaults for most of these parameters, but you're encouraged to consult the test manual to determine what range of parameter values are appropriate and which um, settings should be adjusted based on your specific problem set. So you're now ready to run PEST. Uh, before running PEST, you should run the PEST check utility, which will uh, analyze the input files and identify any errors or warnings that you may have introduced throughout the course of building those input files. PEST can then be uh, kicked off from the toolbar window by clicking the Run PEST button. It will run in a DOS command window, and throughout the PEST progress, you'll see the changes in the objective function the number of optimization iterations that have been run, and how many multiple runs are currently underway. When the PEST run is finished, you'll see the results in the log uh, window. It'll show you if PEST uh, ran or failed for whatever reason, and you can then proceed on to analyzing the results. So come back to the uh, Visual Modful Flex interface. These would be the uh, options you have for the regularization. Here you can adjust your pest control file. I'm not going to run pest in this example since it takes, I believe, five or ten minutes for this tutorial model, but after the pest run is complete, here is where you'll see access to the various output files. So as mentioned previously, there's four key output files that pest will generate. The pest run record has a list of all the parameters, the objective function, a uh, wide range of uh, information for you to analyze and uh, interpret. Again, the nice thing is these files are directly accessible for reading within the interface. You don't need to navigate to a specific model run folder to find those uh, specific files. 
The SEO file contains the sensitivities for your observations. Again, you have all your observations here, the measured and calculated values, and the corresponding sensitivities. The SEN file contains the parameter sensitivities. You can see for each of the pilot point parameters, the uh, uh, current value for each uh, pest iteration, and how the sensitive, sensitivity values change throughout the course of the pest run. Lastly, the uh, RES file contains the residuals for each observation along with the measured and model value for each observation. And if there's a weighting factor applied, you can see the corresponding weighted, measured, and model value. The nice thing we've added to uh, Vidomofo Flex is an option to export the pest results directly to individual Excel worksheets. So one thing we found um, is that we, uh, within the software, you have um, we offer charting options, but uh, more often than not, we get um, our clients asking uh, to have the ability to export the results to Excel so that you can make further customizations, uh, plot settings, et cetera. So what we did um, for this approach is we just dumped the results directly to Excel, and you have full access to the different uh, charting capabilities, um, style settings, et cetera, that Excel offers. So you click on the export to Excel button, and after doing so, you'll be presented with the following Excel file. Each of the different uh, data categories are uh, lumped into their own appropriate Excel worksheet. So here you would have the calculated versus observed uh, heads with the corresponding residuals. With a few clicks, you can select this data and generate uh, your own chart showing the calculated versus observed heads. In the future release, we'll have these predefined charting templates available within the interface, and this is something that we'll, uh, we're currently working on and hope to have available in the next couple months. This worksheet contains the residuals, and likewise, you can do your statistical analysis. You can then, with a few clicks, generate uh, bar charts showing the residuals. Likewise, for the parameter values, so each pilot point uh, is shown in this uh, worksheet and how the value changes over several pest iterations. You can, uh, again, with a few clicks, create your own um, uh, series chart showing changes in pilot point parameter values. Uh, same is true for sensitivities, including making bar charts and uh, line series charts, and also the composite sensitivities for your observations. So, again, what we we try to do is, is make the data in a user-friendly format that you can uh, really, un you're unlimited in terms of what uh, options you want to make uh, in terms of charting and statistical analysis. Yeah, a couple of examples shown on the screen highlight what we just uh, covered in terms of different chart types. So one of the last steps in a test run then is to uh, save the adjusted pest parameters as inputs for a new model run. So typically, you want to uh, run ModFlow with the adjusted parameter distribution that pest is generated for you to see what impact this has on your heads and your corresponding calibration. Often, you want to compare the results from the two models, both the original model and the pest updated model, and uh, also the property distributions between the two models. So within Visual ModFlow Flex, we have the capability to uh, manage multiple numerical models within a single project. This is a significantly um, a significant benefit for pests since you typically, uh, through the course of a pest uh, workflow, will go through several uh, iterations of pests through trying different parameters, weighting factors, uh, different regularization techniques, et cetera, and you may quickly find yourself finding, saving five or ten different versions of the pest model. So this is uh, nicely handled within our interface, so you can save each um, new pest uh, results as inputs for a different numerical model. You can run those within the interface and compare uh, the different models within the single project. So you don't need to flip back and forth between multiple project files or whatnot. This also makes it easier to evaluate, as I mentioned, uh, several pest options or several pest runs, pest runs, whether or not you're comparing regularization techniques, uh, SVD assist, et cetera. This example of how this looks within the uh, project. On the left, you have your original numerical model with your assumed uh, constant values for your uh, hydraulic connectivities. 
On the right, you have the updated PEST model with the distributed values for hydraulic conductivity. Uh, that model can be run, translated, you can interpret the results for that, and you can compare that to the previous versions of the model. Here's a brief look at how that looks in the software then. So on the left here, we have the updated test model with its corresponding uh, parameter distribution for connectivity. And on the right, you have the uh, original model with the uh, single value or constant value zones for the uh, hydraulic connectivity. Any of these models, uh, model windows can be minimized. Uh, you can retrieve them at any time. Here you can see the corresponding uh, head that uh, results from that model. Just translate that one again. There we go. And in the, the uh, tree on the bottom left here is where you would access the different uh, model runs. So you see I have for the specific grid, I have the first model run with the corresponding inputs and outputs. And I have uh, the second model run, which is the past updated run with its corresponding inputs and outputs. So a few more um, summary slides, uh, and then I'll open up the, the uh, lines for questions. Um, the key things we've done with VMOD, with PEST and VMOD Flex is offer this workflow approach, which makes it very simple, logical, easy to use. Um, hopefully you never get lost or, scra or find yourself trying to remember where certain options or settings can be defined for PEST. And by uh, spending less time on learning the software, you can focus more on uh, putting in meaningful parameters for the PEST run and uh, interpreting the past results. Within VMOD Flex, you can easily distinguish between those soft and fixed pilot points with different uh, style settings showing the fixed values from pumping tests or uh, field or lab analysis for those points. And you also can de define the uh, fixed flag for those along with the corresponding initial values. We provided quick access to the test results through those uh, tab previews that I've shown you so you can quickly uh, at a glance, see the results from PEST, determine which uh, input parameters need to adjust and rerun PEST without uh, wasting time trying to find the different files in different folders. PEST, through its nature, um, goes through several iterations or several scenarios um, where you want to try different options. And the multi-model aspect of EMOD Flex is ideally suited for running PEST under these conditions. Lastly, PEST. Um, if you want to run this within uh, VMOD Flex, requires a pro or premium license. Uh, it is available in the 30-day trial version, which you can download and access from our website. Some future plans for PEST. Some of these uh, things we're already we're currently working on, um, but we'll continue working on in the new year. The first uh, would be to include additional uh, PEST parameters, those being recharge, evapotranspiration, and also um, heads and conductances from other boundary conditions such as rivers, drains, general head, et cetera. We'll add support for additional observation types, uh, those being drawdown and flux. We'll add uh, support for distributed processing, both uh, on a single machine and across multiple machines. We'll add the uh, uncertainty mode uh, capabilities of PEST, which is done through the null space Monte Carlo analysis. And then lastly, we'll add support for the PEST predictive mode capabilities. This will probably be done uh, to coincide with the release of uh, MT3DMS or transport runs, because really it's most often used for um, predicting scenarios uh, related to uh, flu migration. Other plans for Vision Waffle Flex for next year, um, we are currently working on integrating MT3DMS, and we should have a release for that uh, in the first quarter next year. We'll start working on Modflow Surfact. Uh, we also have started plans and designs for Modflow USG, which is the unstructured grid version of Modflow, which uh, should be released very shortly. We want to um, 
showcase something at the MOFO conference, which takes place next uh, June in Golden, Colorado. Um, toward the second half of the year, we'll be working on integrating surface water and groundwater packages using the ModFlow UZF, SFR2, and Lake packages. And then, as I mentioned, in parallel, we'll be continuing to make improvements to PEST throughout the course of the year. Some quick closing remarks. Um, we're having one day WebEx training uh, for VMOD Flex in January. Um, if you mentioned that you attended this webinar, you'll receive a 20% discount on this training. So we want to uh, reward you and thank you for taking the time to attend this. Uh, if you're interested, just uh, email our sales team at the address shown on the screen, and you can uh, register for this course. We also want to hear from you in terms of other ideas or topics that you'd like to see covered in future webinars. So feel free to email me or our sales uh, representative those shown on the screen there. For more details, you can um, download a trial version on our website uh, shown there. We also have a, a blog post on PEST, which summarizes many of the concepts I've talked about in the webinar today, which should go up in the next day or two. And we have a brief write-up about the PEST capabilities shown on the main VMODplex homepage. So at this point, I'll conclude the presentation. If you have any uh, questions, please use the chat option that's available in WebEx and I'll be more than happy to try and answer those for you.